Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are continuing this little video series that I'm doing on how to read ingredient labels and dissect them and figure out what's going on so that you can just know more about your products or if you're trying to figure out how to sort of make something yourself, you know what you're looking for and how to, you know, figure stuff out. So today we're going to take a look at five of the most common reasons you'll find ingredients in skincare products and sort of what they're doing, what their role in that product is. This is far from comprehensive. I originally filmed this video with 10 and it was basically a feature length film. It was insanely long. So today we are looking at the five most common roles ingredients will play in products. So if this was looking at like a house and how it goes together, we're kind of looking at the foundation and the framing and the roof and not so much that throw pillow or that lovely oriental rug. So yeah. Something to keep in mind with ingredients, especially more natural ones, which come with a lot of properties to them, is that they're there for usually more than one reason. Something like cocoa butter can bring four different properties to a recipe because it's quite stiff. It can bring some structure, usually smells like cocoa. So there we have some, some scent, some fragrance. Cocoa butter softens the skin and it also has occlusive properties. So there's four different things from just one ingredient. So it's important to keep in mind that it's pretty hard to put any one ingredient into just one bucket. You have to remember that a lot of them do wear multiple hats in a formulation, which I mean, I think it's pretty cool, right? You can choose one ingredient and get multiple benefits from it. There's usually a primary function that that ingredient is playing while the secondary functions are just like, hey, that's awesome, like gift with purchase sort of thing. Um, and you'll, you'll learn how to figure that out basically just with practice. And sometimes there is no, this is the core function. Sometimes it is there for a variety of reasons. So that's just something to keep in mind as we work through this and learn this is very much, it is just five basic things. We're not going to be diving super in depth here, but in the future I plan to do videos where we take a look at a product and we actually discuss the ingredients in that product and why they're in there and the different things that each ingredient is doing in the context of that product. And so hopefully as those videos start to come out, you know, we can start to learn more about multi-purpose ingredients together. <laughs> the first thing you wanna do when you're trying to figure out why an ingredient is in a product is typically know what it is. So if it says water, you probably have a fairly good grasp on what water is, but if it's acetyl alcohol, maybe you wanna Google that, what it does and why it might be included. Knowing what your ingredients are gives you a great starting point to start to go through your ingredients list and start to drop ingredients into the five buckets that we're going to talk about today. So let's dive into those buckets. So bucket number one is sort of the solvent or the carrier oil, the main body of a product. So in lotion, it's usually water or something that's mostly water like aloe vera juice or witch hazel or a floral hydrosol. And so the water serves to dilute our other ingredients. So water soluble ingredients, things like allantoin or panthenol or vegetable glycerin, as well as the oils in it, which is what gives it that lovely feel. If you take the water out of lotion, you no longer have a nice lightweight cream. You have a bunch of oils and then a bunch of water soluble ingredients that don't have anything to dissolve in. So that's usually what water is. And then if you're looking at a oil-based product, you'll usually find a couple cheaper oils at the beginning of the list. So something like almond oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, shea butter, sort of less expensive oils at the beginning of the list. If it's a more expensive product, like a facial serum, you will often find more expensive oils at the front of the list. And obviously that is reflected in the price of the final product. <laughs> Bucket number two is pretty closely related to bucket number one. It's basically what gives our product structure. So if you're looking at a room spray, there's not a lot of structure to that. So the water is sort of that solvent bulk body ingredient that is basically what gives our product structure, which basically is no structure. But if you are looking at something like a solid bomb, you'll be looking for ingredients that contribute to solidness. So you'll be looking for waxes, beeswax, uh, candle aloe wax, carnauba wax, bayberry wax, soy wax. You'll be looking for thicker butter. So something like shea butter or cocoa butter used in higher quantities can produce a solid product. Or if you're looking at a thicker lotion or cream or body butter as well, you could be looking for stearic acid, acetyl alcohol. Those are for fatty acids and alcohols that offer thickening. And then if you are looking at more water-based concoctions, you can be looking for gums and gels. So something like carbomer, xanthan gum, guar gum, carrageenan, these sorts of things start to offer thickening and structure to our products. 
Up next is emulsifiers or solubilizers. So if the product that you're looking at contains both oil and water, you're going to need an ingredient in there that brings them together. So this is a really easy ingredient to know you have to look for if you are looking at a product that has both oil and water in it. So if you're looking at something like a lotion or a cream, that's usually going to have a more complex emulsifier in it. So as a home crafter, you're probably used to working with ingredients like polo wax or emulsifying wax NF, which sort of to us are just one ingredient, but are made of several different emulsifiers blended together to create a complete emulsifier. Now, most professional companies are going to be blending their own emulsifiers. If you're looking at a product on Etsy, you might see emulsifying wax NF on something, but if you're looking at something from like Jurgens, what you're going to see is different emulsifying ingredients scattered throughout the ingredient list. So these are the sorts of things to look for. This is not a comprehensive list, but it's a starting point of some pretty common ones. If you are looking at a product that has sort of a simpler emulsion, you're basically looking at something that's mostly water that has a little bit of oil sort of solubilized into it. You're usually only looking for maybe one or two emulsifiers. These are typically liquid emulsifiers because the final product is also liquid. <laughs> and so these are the types of things you're looking for. So polysorbates and esters usually. So oil and water, there's got to be an emulsifier, so go find it in your ingredients list. Our next bucket is fragrance. So there's usually three different types of things that you can find in a product that gives it a lovely scent. So the easiest one to identify is essential oils. Because essential oils definitely smell like something and they're usually called out pretty clearly in the ingredients list kind of towards the bottom. Lavender essential oil, it smells like lavender and that's a really terrible murder mystery. It's like, yes, it was lavender. Lavender did it in the lotion. So that's an easy one. Essential oils are also one of those ingredients that can very often play multiple roles in a product, but today we're talking about <laughs> just five things. So scent, essential oils, yes. Another thing you might notice is just like fragrance or parfum. Those are often synthetic fragrances. They can also be essential oils. Manufacturers are totally allowed to just hide their blend of essential oils behind that term. So you'll often kind of want to let your nose and maybe the label on the package be your guide as to maybe what you should be looking at for what that scent is. So if it says cucumber and green tea lotion, uh, you can probably guess that they used maybe a cucumber and a green tea fragrance oil, but if it says like lavender and peppermint lotion, well, maybe they used a lavender and peppermint fragrance oil. They might have used a lavender and peppermint essential oil. Not really sure, but yeah, fragrance, a little ambiguous. Let your nose be the guide. And then the third thing that you can add for scent and fragrance is smelly ingredients. So coconut oil smells like coconuts and cocoa butter smells like cocoa and beeswax smells like honey and so you can have these ingredients adding scent to your products as well. Our final bucket is preservatives and antioxidants, ingredients that extend the shelf life of our products. So if the product that you're looking at contains water, it's got to have a broad spectrum preservative in it. Now, similar to emulsifiers, Large manufacturers tend to blend their own preservatives rather than use a pre-built one like a Germaben or a Liquid Germal Plus. So what you're going to want to look for is those preserved ingredients scattered throughout your ingredient list. So here is a starter list of different ones to look for. It is by no means comprehensive, but you should find something like that scattered throughout the ingredient list if there's water or something that is mostly water like aloe vera juice, rose hydrosol, witch hazel, etc. If you don't find anything that looks like a preservative, be wary. There are a couple preservatives that can hide under fragrance. And then you can also keep a lookout for Japanese honeysuckle, which is a naturally occurring paraben, which I have noticed some brands like 100% pure use. And people look at them and are like, geez, there's no preservatives in this. And it's like, yes, there is. It's right there. But it's listed like a plant extract. And so it doesn't look like one. So yeah. <laughs> If a product contains oils, it's usually going to contain an antioxidant. So keep an eye out for ingredients like tocopherol, rosemary seed extract, and sodium lactate. These ingredients are typically included at a fairly low usage rate, so usually kind of 1% or lower, and they are there to retard rancidity. So they slow down the oxidization process of our oils so that they don't go rancid in our product. Because rancidity and a bacterial mold, fungi, or are two different kinds of spoilage. And so if you have a very effective broad spectrum preservative warding off a bacterial uh, disco fest in your lotion, 
but you don't have an antioxidant, you can find that the oils start to go rancid, even though there's no mold growing. So, yeah. Okay, so those are the five basic buckets of what ingredients do in skincare products. There are, of course, so many more. There's surfactants and humectants and anti-aging and aromatherapy and just so, so, so many things. So this is definitely just a starter video, but this should help. This should help you figure out what the bones of a recipe are and how it's sort of holding itself together. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, check the description box below for some more informative reading and be sure to check out my blog. I know I have a lot of people here on YouTube who have found me on YouTube and have never really checked out my blog. I started blogging in 2011 and I've only been on YouTube for about a year. So there's over 900 posts on my blog, Humble Bee and Me. So if you are looking for something, a recipe, a guide, an FAQ, chances are you'll find it on my blog. So make sure you check that out too. All right, see you next time.